With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hey, uh, so welcome to another uh, Super Booth uh, 20 home edition. Uh, we're doing a bit something different here because our friends at uh, UDO Audio down the road, they're actually outside the building. There's George there with a what would seem like an isolation beard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's a little embarrassing, but, uh, you know, it's desperate times. <laughs> Is it some kind of bet? You kind of like keep it growing the beard for as long as the isolation lasts or are you just uh, it's just circumstantial? <laughs> It's actually a bit embarrassing. Uh, I've gotten used to going to a barber's to get an open blade shave, so I don't actually have any shaving equipment. And it's got so long now that I need to clipper it, but all the shops are shut. So I think I'm making excuses, but for, for now, it's just we have a beard. So It's a great story. So we're outside your build. So, I mean, we're just going to have a look around your facility because obviously the Super 6 is in production and all those things. But let's have a look uh, and see what you've got. Let's have a look at your lovely facility. Yeah, please come in. Well, this is, uh, I don't know if people know Bristol, but we're on the sort of east side of Bristol, um, heading out towards Bath, obviously where you guys are based. And uh, yeah, we've been here for a couple of years. Um, I used to be over the road um, until sort of UDO came along and then we set up our own place. And uh, yeah, come on in. So this is where you do all the kind of prototyping as a set what what happens in this building so basically we do all the development here we do this is where the udo staff work in the office um we do all the prototyping all of the firmware development and at the moment we're also doing a very limited sort of build so we're building these sort of beta test sense here we're also doing the final uh, QA and test of the first production run, the sort of first instruments that we're building. Um, we are bringing back from Germany here, checking them all out, and I want to touch every single one. So there is a production area here. So if you come on through and have a look. Nick, you might remember Challenge Annika, but yeah. for some reason... <laughs> your your uh, ass isn't quite as nice as hers, if, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> no, it's really not. But then again, that was the late 80s, so yeah, things that's might true. Um, So, yeah, here um, we basically keep materials. Um, I don't know if you can see down here, but there's a sort of an amount of synthesizers. Yeah. It reminds me, like, I don't know if you've seen Alien, um, where, like, the scene where there's all those face huggers, one's popped open. Um, so. Uh, so these are all ready to go. These are or these are boxes for ones that are going to be ready to go or sort of on the build or. Yeah, these are these are just sort of waiting for collection. Basically, they've all got their test sheets and travellers. Um, we are yeah, basically just keeping everything here until the last minute because things are a bit crazy with deliveries and yeah. logistics at the moment, as you might imagine. Um, but yeah, we have a little production area here. Um, so the only people generally allowed in here are is whoever's had the training and got the got the gear on for doing assembly. Um, we got a unit out, we popped one out of the box for uh, for everyone to have a look at. Here, it's nice little UDO dust covers. But everyone's obviously seen the Super Six. But this is a production model, and it's uh, in its end cheeks. I think it's actually probably serial number that one and ready to go and tested. Yeah. So they're actually going out to the first uh, wave of people who ordered them now. Is that all? That, that, if that's the process that's now happening. Yeah, we were due to start um, shipping them all out uh, at the end of March, but given the way things are and that we're a little bit down on staff, some of us are still working, but we've had to split up in shifts, and we're not all here at the same time and trying to yeah. trying to do things by the rules. So we pushed it back a little bit, um, but yeah, they are about to go out the sort of first ones are out with our with our testers now um and these are sort of there's production happening in germany and happening here as well obviously i can't go to germany to qa all the production so i'm getting them all shipped here instead which is an expensive and logistics nightmare as you might imagine but it has to be done i think to begin with um but yeah we've got a little area here where we do some testing here's a this isn't actually a production model, but this is just a, 
a part of the synthesizer, one of the prototypes we've been doing some testing on. Um, here we've got various various bits and pieces, the serial number for the next one we make and uh, some pre-prepared pre electronics with all our various dust protection for the various different uh, components etc. These, uh, these are going to go we be built into a synthesizer shortly. So they're just out. They look very. While. They look very pretty. Are you are you someone that ascribes to the uh, the design notion that the insides have to look pleasing as well as the outside? One hundred percent. Absolutely, absolutely. That is really important. So inside the actual synthesizer, I um. Hang on a second. I just need to obey a couple of precautions. We do have a. a this is a. I don't know if you can see here, but it's a, it's an anti-static floor. We got a sort of wood floor over there, and this is the sort of production area. Um, but if I handle it, you see that even our circuit boards um, carry livery and... Um, oh, lovely, lovely. So everything has the sort of UDO detailing on it. And yeah, I, I, I really think that, yes, form follows function, but also when something is functionally pretty, it also looks nice as well, you know? It's like... It, it, it really is important to me that somebody opens this thing up and it's easy to service. You can see where everything is and it, and it looks nice as well because you know, people are going to open these things up and scratch around in the inside as well. Um, so here, um, here's our development area. So these are, uh, so we do firmware on the right, hardware on the left here at the moment, so the electronics benches. Um, the synthesizers that are out there on the bench are just prototypes. They're carrying uh, carrying a few dents and scratches, or relict in the yeah, guitar. Yeah, oh, relict. I like. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. One. So, d are they the ones that you would use, kind of for f flashing, uh, sort of pre-beta firmware updates, and you test them all out and stuff on that? Is that is that how? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, have a little look at them if you like. Flip one open. Um, yeah, so basically these are our test synths. We've got about five of these. I've got one at home and we've got a few here. And we basically open the lid of them and we're, base, we're, we're inside. I won't show you the inside just yet, not until we're, not until we're selling them. Um, but uh, yeah, so we, we connect up our various bits of equipment, like little umbilicals go in and we program them. Um, and so we've got various bits of analysis equipment, audio analyzers, speakers, because your ears are probably the best piece of test equipment you could imagine having. Your ears are just so sensitive, those almost like, yeah, they're incredible. We've got about 90 decibels of dynamic range, I think, just an ordinary hearing. If you imagine an oscilloscope like this is only eight bits. So if you're looking at a waveform, I think the maximum dynamic range of eight bits is, oh God, my maths. Uh, it's about 50 decibels. Oh, right. Is, uh, so yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite amazing. So yeah, we do sort of development here. Um, I haven't worn a hole in the floor here next to my computer yet, but um, I will do because I spend a lot of time here, as you might imagine. Um, but yeah. Um, carrying your This is probably um, probably of, of, of interest to some people. Um, we've got some synthesizers here. Uh, it kind of really tells the story of UDO a little bit. This rack of bits, obviously not the not the mini brew on the top left, which belongs to Philip Tayson, by the way. If you're watching Philip, I'm really sorry. I'm going to return your mini brew at some point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, these, these synthesizers here, I think it all started for me with, um, with this one in, uh, that was built in my parents' shed uh, when I was 18 or 19. And this was made with old-fashioned Curtis and uh, SSM chips that were just available in odds and sods um, back then. That was like almost, almost 20 years ago. Um, but this is like a... Uh... So these are essentially kind of... Are these prototypes or are these just the first things that you, that you built, the, the evolution? 
Well, these, I wouldn't say that these are prototypes of the Super 6, no, not at all, but they do kind of tell the story of how um, UDO came about and how we started as a company. Um, because making analog polysynths, so I was starting off with monosynths actually, but making analog polysynths was just something I was always like really fascinated with and kind of had spent obviously lots of time um, making and sort of testing concepts. Um, it all started with this one, the uh, my parents shed. This is actually my mum's breadboard. I cut the ends <laughs> off the breadboard um, and uh, <laughs> sanded them down. And uh, yeah, my mum actually did come to find a breadboard four inches shorter. Um, does it make but, a noise? Uh, Huh? Does it, yeah, does yeah, it yeah. I think this, I think this is one to make these basic sounds at the moment. It's interesting. After twenty years, it actually does still work. So, what's it? A two oscillator monosynth? Is that the kind of? Uh, is, that, is that what we're looking at? It's a two oscillator uh, synthesizer based on um, Curtis and SSM chips. Nice. <laughs> I'm amazed it still does anything. It's, it's got a disaster inside. It looks a bit like um, it look. It's got a, a look a little bit like those uh, the Polyvox kind of typeface. It's got that sort of vibe going on. <laughs> Do you know what this actually is? Is that it's actually iron on t-shirt transfers. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever, ever remember trying to do that? It's like yeah. you just iron on the print. That's basically what uh, what made that synthesizer. But um, yeah, after that, um, I was like, right, really want to make an analog polysynth and make this thing down here, which is um, called Domino. And I don't know anyone if anyone's heard of a place called Emis yes. in, um, in, in Bristol, but uh, the casework here, which is made of this lovely kind of nice red wood, um, was actually made by John Horrell, who... Ah, oh, stop me if my knowledge is wrong, but I think he was the dad of the guy who uh, looked after and ran and owned the Emis synthesizer place up in North Bristol. Um, but yeah, he made this lovely sort of case for it. And this is a really... Um That's nice. Is it the only one that exists? It's the only one that exists of its kind, yeah. And it's a, uh, well, it was going to be an eight voice by timbral analog synthesizer. It's got a lot actually in common with a, a Revision 2 Prophet 5. It's got the same envelopes and filters. So what is it? Is it an eight, is it actually eight voice or what's the? I've got as far as four voices and ah. then I, uh, <laughs> then I basically gave up, but it sounds, um, it still sounds absolutely lovely. It's, it's kind of aged now and, and this is probably like oh, 15 or 16 years old. Um, and I think electronics do have a tendency to kind of um, age a little bit, so it's got its own character. But maybe, maybe that's just audio fault talk, I don't know. Maybe it's nostalgia that makes me feel. Uh, no, I, th I, th I think there might be something in what you say. I mean, because things do bed in, and also, uh, like you say, age, and you get more randomness and chaos into the as they deteriorate. I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And there's still this synthesizer here still makes um, a really nice, um, really nice hard sync. Um, I'm sort of set, setting a patch up to do hard sync. I don't know if you can see, but it's not the. Uh, it's not the nicest um, ergonomic angle. Oh, yeah, I don't know if you can hear the hard sync, but it sounds really nice on this synth. I've never, I've never quite been able to make something sound quite like that, but again, but I will get there. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, anyway. lovely. Yeah, so these knobs are really like really awfully wobbly and 
I don't know if you can see it's made out of this really nice like aluminium. It cost an absolute packet to get machined. So this was never something that could ever be made, but I did learn a lot about kind of making polysynths with that. Um, and then made this one. And this one is, again, was supposed to be a bitambral eight voice polysynth. Only got to four voices in the end. Um, and unlike that and that, which used Cursus and SSM chips, this one was um, fully discrete. So everything wow. inside here was made using discrete transistors, all the voices, and I made these little potted modules, oscillators and filters, an SSM2040 clone, and a oscillator chip module, and they're all potted in like little encapsulated plastic blocks, uh, which is interesting because this, this synthesizer uses analog oscillators, and uh, still <laughs> has no auto-tune on it and all, um, all 16 oscillators have remained in tune for uh, the last kind of five years, which is quite nice. Um, wow. Does it need warming up or does it just come on? Uh... It takes um, about four minutes before everything's completely stable. What's it called? What was it called? This this one is called uh, Artisan. Um, so again, it's, it's completely a one of its kind. Um, it was, the woodwork was made by a chap called James, who is a friend of Gaz Williams's. And oh, yes. uh, your Gaz uh, introduced me to this guy, James, who made this nice, I don't know if you can see down the side, but it's got this lovely, um, this lovely quilting on the, I don't know if Anthony can get it on the yeah, camera. Yeah, no, I see that. Yeah, it's got this really nice thing, but this thing, it's difficult for you to see the actual scale of it, um, but it's absolutely enormous, and it weighs an absolute ton, and you can't lift it with uh, one person. It's just, it's humongous. I mean, that's like a, that's a, a how many, five octave keyboard, but the synth's like almost as deep as it is wide, um, which is obscene, but... It's got that lovely big wide control surface. There's plenty of room to get your hands around all the controls. And uh, yeah, still this one has got some real, um, real nice character to it, basically. Um, because it's sort of, it is made with these all discrete circuits and it was made with really, really expensive, um, you know, super match transistor pairs all throughout. Everything's super low noise, super high precision. It sounds really silky and silky and smooth but again it's kind of um, not something you could ever really produce commercially so this is um yeah one of a kind basically well, they all have a sort of aesthetic in common you know there is an aesthetic you know, a, for whatever you were going for at the time you know you can see that you've you've developed that, that that's something that's been moving on throughout the things that you've made interesting yeah but also the architecture so the aesthetic yeah i mean they all look quite different i mean this of course the modal 008 which i was involved with modal and did the sort of the the voice architecture of this instrument they've all got very similar voice architectures and actually the the super six again has got a, a fairly similar voice architecture um they all look yeah they have they have an aesthetic for sure um, I think they look all quite different, um, and Super 6 especially, um, but actually even the circuits, the circuits have nothing in common, no two oscillator circuits are the same, no two filter circuits are the same in any of them, um, but the actual architecture, the way a sound is, is made and you flow through the instrument is, um, is common, common to all of them. Um, and of oh, course... That's really lovely. Yeah, the 008 is still, compared to all of the rest of them, it's by far the most um, flexible and powerful. It lets you go so far into the sort of analog uh, programming um, that it's sort of, yeah, none, none of the other synthesizers let you go to that kind of depth as this one. And it has the sort of 15 mode 
analog filter, which is pretty fancy, which is something none of the rest have. Um, and again, the Super 6 is like different, a different ethos. It's sort of really immediate, really hands-on, and kind of this is for sort of much deeper programming. Um, these instruments, again, are probably kind of more, more hands-on. Um, but yeah, um, so that's kind of, yeah, goes to show that although sort of, I guess UDO is brand new, we were making these modules, these little chips as repair parts for all profits. And also there's a company called Pittsburgh Modular in the United States who are making oscillators for them for, uh, for a long while for their um, foundation and waveforms module and various others. Um, so we've sort of been around doing bits and pieces for quite some time. Um, a lot happened before, um, yeah, before the, the Super 6s appeared um, some, some years later. But I, um, this is the one I really love. It really is. I mean, compared to like everything else that I've worked on, it's the first instrument that's just really, um, really practical and really portable and really finished. And the others are kind of nice curiosity pieces, but this is something, I don't know, this sort of, this sort of relic look to the bashed inside kind of helps to illustrate. This is something you can really use and you can really take about, I love the size of it. Um, I love the way you can get your hands around the, around the back to sort of lift it up to see what's going on. Everything's protected and your connectors when they're not plugged in. It's kind of, it's producible, it's reliable, it feels nice, it's spread out, and yeah, I, I love this thing, and I can't, I can't wait to actually see what people do with it. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's been, I think it's a year, isn't it, since we first took the cover off it for you guys. Um, yeah, Boot. maybe, maybe, maybe it's that long, yeah, must be. It, yeah, that, doesn't uh, seem, that doesn't seem that long, because they always say that it's the last, you know, 10, 15 five, 10, 15 percent that takes the longest to kind of get past, isn't it? It's... <laughs> yeah, it really is. I think like there's something about engineering that it's like, no matter how experienced you are as an engineering team, you always have the same conspiracy of optimism. And it's, it's happened, it's like in all the other industries and sectors I've worked in and engineering products, it's always the same. You see a product um, that's there on a bench and it's doing... 85% of what it should do and you think you're 85% of the way there but it's like completely the other way around you you know like exactly like you say it's it's getting the detail getting everything right um, that takes that takes the time um, yeah what we've been working on at the moment again uh, don't stare too hard at these these are bashed in prototypes uh, the production models are over there but we've been getting for example the filter tuning um, going on these synths. Um, it's, wor it's worth a quick demo, actually. Um, oop, if the audio won't go crazy. Um, do a quick demo of the filter tune? Yeah, Where's why the not? Yeah, we could do that. So yeah, just going to uh, do a little demonstration of how you can play filter resonance across the keys in perfect tracking on the Super 6 and actually it makes a really nice kind of mellow warm natural sound. Um, we have set it up, uh, hopefully it will sound alright. So what we're listening to is um, in 12 voice mode the 12 uh, analog filters all playing together. Thank you. 